The sun's come out and we're ready for Dorrance Eye Camp and Scott. Dorrance and Scott have already had a pretty exciting week. They uh, earned the title of Reserve Nursery Champion yesterday. Uh, Scott's a really young dog and uh, pretty impressive performance in both the nursery and open classes. Our rules allow that you can you can run a dog in both nursery and open and, and Dorrance has taken advantage of this and it's so far it's paid off. It has. Uh, Dorrance is a very experienced handler. He's been uh, handling these border collies on sheep and cattle for uh, 30 to 40 years. Um, he was competitive in a lot of sheepdog trials way back in the eight, seven, late 70s and 80s and has uh, been out of it a little while, but uh, in the last few years has, has been a pretty active cattle dog trialer and uh, is uh, really a valuable part of our community and uh, has mentored and helped a lot of people along the way too. Scott sure made a nice outrun, very quiet as he went around behind the cattle, picked them up. But we can see a little bit of differences in the cattle already where one has slowed down and, and said, I'll just wait here if y'all want to go on without me. But Dorrance and Scott said, no, we'll, we'll make it a group. That's right, and here we come again to that berm on that irrigation ditch and they hit the, the flat on the bottom and they speed up a little bit and uh, so Dorrance flanks down, Scott around. Second three, um, the second group of cattle had drifted a little farther down the field there that time. And so he's going to put them all in a group of six and uh, bring them on down the field. And now uh, he's going to bring Scott around to kind of protect that bottom side and that draw where those cattle want to go to that exhaust gate. And he gets the, the cattle stopped and he uh, angles them up towards that first set of fetch panels. This looks like it's going to go pretty smooth, but I'm not giving up on the idea. I mentioned a while ago there was one cow that just stopped for a minute, and I'm, I've had my eye on that cow, and sure enough, this cow is, is on the tail end of this group. Hang back, that's the thing is you've got, he's got a couple that would like to take off for the exhaust gate, and one that would just like to stick his head down and eat grass. And so uh, it's going to be a little bit of a stop and go deal. But, uh, you know, Dorrance came in here with uh, 240 points. He dropped 30 points um, out of the possible 270 out of the earlier preliminary runs. So he's got a little making up to do. Um, he was ahead of Kayleen Forsyth coming in, but, but not by too much. So, uh, and Kayleen put the pressure on him with a, a perfect score. Uh, she had some cattle that wanted, uh, or had a single that wanted to run off, and she was having to bring it back. And, Dorrance may have to deal with a straggler that he has to keep a uh, little giddy up on. That's right. That's right. And uh, Scott's doing a nice job, and Dorrance is doing a good job of keeping Scott tucked in there. You know, these border collies, they usually want to either stop the one getting away or pushing the ones from behind, and every dog has a tendency, one or the other. Um, I think Scott is a little bit more wired. Um, to getting up in front and slowing down movement than he is uh, pushing from behind. So we see Dorrance flanking him back and forth in behind the cattle to keep things moving. Um, Scott is pretty willing to go flank out and check in on that front end and keep him steered in the right direction. He does a nice job. He has a good feel for the cattle. You know, some dogs, in my opinion, would see six bunches of one, but I think Scott is seeing one bunch of six. He does. He does, and he, he sees that straggler and understands what Dorrance is asking for him when he flanks him around behind. You bet. You bet. A little bit of a snag here, getting to that big levee. Uh, some cattle on it, some cattle in it, some cattle out of it. <laughs> That's right, and it gets tricky for the dog, too. They get down in that, in that ditch, and uh, if cattle are on the other side of it, now... You know, from Scott's perspective, he can't see any cattle, but in his head he knows where they are still. And so he's on top of that berm now and can see everything. Um, you know, and putting himself down into that berm right under those cattle is a, a pretty precarious position too. I mean, the dog's not very tall and those cattle above him, you know, dogs usually won't like to approach cattle from the bottom side of something um, with those cattle right on top of them. It's like pushing a boulder from the downhill side. <laughs> That's right. You know what happens if things break loose. That's so. right. That's right. So here he's got the straggler pushed up out of that irrigation ditch. And he's got the, the leader up wanting to go around the edge of that panel. 
So here he's got him tucked down um, on the near side of that panel and he's uh, gonna let him sit there and he's gonna get his stragglers pushed up the hill towards the opening in those drive panels. Here he flanks him out around and tucks that uh, straggler in and pushes him up to rejoin the group and uh, clear that set of drive panels for a full point score um, so far in the course. Uh, things are going smoothly and uh, you know he's hit every obstacle pretty much the first try. He hasn't had to go, by, go back and retry things which is going to put him in good stead later on in the course time-wise. Um, if you're not doing things two and three times, um, you're, you're moving along the course and you're using your time well. We don't, of course, know how he's going to finish up just yet, but if, uh, if total points are, are the same, then, then total time uh, makes a difference. And, and so uh, being efficient with each one of these obstacles mm -hmm. is certainly going to work in his favor. That's right. And the reason we set that up to be like that is it's just good stock work. You don't want to have to go around in circles. It tends to confuse the cattle. The more you circle them around and make them do things multiple times, um, believe it or not, it kind of makes sense to them to pick a direction and go there. And uh, it's more efficient stock work for uh, the cattle, and, uh, and that's the way it is at home. We don't like to have to do things multiple times. It's harder on us and harder on the cattle, and we get less done in a day. Well, again, the levy has played a, a, a big role here. He's got them scattered out. We got my favorite cow hanging back there on the, <laughs> on the top of the hill or the levy there. And right out, but right out. so Scott's had to work a little harder with this sun coming out. It may play a role in in his uh, endurance before this runs over with. You know, we do see a big difference in the heat with the sun coming out, and you don't realize it if you haven't been in these high mountain valleys. But that temperature can swing. 10 or 15 degrees one way or the other through the day. It isn't uh, like uh, some places where you basically warm up and warm up and warm up in a line and then start to cool down. Um, with these clouds and these fronts as they go through the mountains, it'll warm up 10 or 15 degrees with the sun and it, you know, you're that much closer to the sun and you've got that radiation beating down on you and then it'll uh, cool off when the, when the sun uh, goes under a cloud, so looks like uh, Dorrance and Scott are going to continue uh, their flow of getting things done on the first try. It was really nice work to kind of recapture things and bend them around that pen and uh, stick them through that T shoot. So now they're uh, on to the uh, pen where they're going to need to put uh, three head of cattle into that pen and then take the other three and uh, sort them two and one in that sort box. So, Dorrance is going to hang out here and let Scott bring them to him. I see a see an opening there. Let's see if Dorrance does what Kayleen did. Looks like he is. He's going to call in for a shed there and just take those three and put them in the pen. That's right. It's a good skill to have. It's something actually that I use at home all the time, even out in a pasture. If I'm trying to take one cow somewhere, a dog that can understand that it doesn't have to be working the whole group in front of it is a lot more useful um, at home when, uh, when you don't have to bring the whole group to a corral. If you can sort off a few head, maybe you've got a sick one or something, and put them in a corral or uh, load them up in a trailer, um, it, it's a handy skill to have. One thing I'd like to, to note here that, that I really appreciate is that Scott's working in what I like to refer to as the flight zone. You know, uh, he's not in the fight zone. These cattle don't need it. These cattle have been worked enough that, that uh, they'll say, if you'll just give us a sense of direction right. here, we'll yeah. go. And, and Scott's staying in that flight zone and, uh, and getting all the movement out of the cattle that he needs. If he were any closer, it might be, it might be more than he could handle. He'd just speed things up. And there we see uh, Dorrance and, and uh, Scott are kind of working on that straggler that doesn't want to go. And in the meantime, the two that uh, are kind of interested in traveling someplace made it all the way through that alley and through the uh, uh, non-pointed hole in the sort pen. So Dorrance and Scott are going to have to regroup and make a second try at this sort obstacle. But fortunately for him, it's uh, the second to last obstacle, and it's the first one he's had to retry. Yeah, looks like he's still got plenty of time. So he just... My guess is Dorrance is going to try to keep that straggler tucked in a little tighter and part of the group of three. 
There you go. Yep, and there he goes. Keeps him tucked up and into that pen. Dorrance is, uh, once again, you can't run, and he's kind of fighting the urge, but he's got the, the one head here taken off and willing to go through, but nope, that one head went right back in. And so uh, Dorrance is going to have to, uh, I believe, daylight these cattle in order to uh, come back and score a sort. You'll see, it, it may be that that one calf didn't, his tail didn't all the way clear. Um, okay, well, it, it looks like it's a clean sort, but let's see what the uh, scoring officials say about it. Lie down, lie down. No. Okay, the scorer's stopping him here. Yep. Our scorer is Dan Gill from Hernando, Mississippi, and uh, he must have told Dorrance there that no, that one calf got out and like uh, we've told people earlier that uh, everything has to enter through the entrance in order to score. So Dorrance is going to have to regroup again. Um, fortunately for him, he was so clean ar around the course earlier on that he's going to have plenty of time to go back there and, uh, and take another shot at this sort. Um, once again, the, the leader uh, wanting to go a little faster, and then he's got the follower, and having to keep him tucked up is is kind of getting him. Um, it's hard to keep track of them if they're wanting to scatter out all the time. I would imagine Dorrance is doing the math out there too. He was a few points uh, ahead, but Kayleen came in with a full score, and and uh, he's been clean up to up to this point, so he knows he needs. He needs to have a, a full score to at That's least That's right. Stay even. And, you know, Dorrance didn't come into the finals with this final go with in the top down, ten. He was around it, but he and there that one ducks out again. He, he he had dropped thirty from the earlier prelim runs, and so he's got some time to make up. And there's some some good dogs up yet to uh, to run, and he knows that he kind of needs everything he can get out here if he wants to be uh, in the in the running for a national title. Well, you know, this has been uh, grueling on, on the young dog. Uh, he had three runs in the nursery, and he's already had two runs in the open. This is now his third run in the open. So it gets challenging for these young dogs mentally to come back this many times in this, in this many days. Yeah, it's a lot of stress, and, you know, it's hot out there right now. Um, I think Scott's the kind of a dog that tends to run pretty cool anyway for Dorrance, and now he's got what he hasn't had before. He's got three head settled in the middle of the pen, and Dorrance is going to have time to walk around and, uh, and do this. He gets his one head out, and then Dorrance steps in and makes the cut, and uh, the two head, uh, with a little bit of help from Scott there, uh, push, get pushed out, and... Uh, that sort is complete for full points. And now Dorrance um, is looking at the clock, and uh, he's, getting close, he's getting up there. He's got 16 minutes, and he's uh, probably over a little over 13. Really shouldn't be a problem to make it out of that exhaust gate, since that's where they want to go, as long as he can get that straggler to go out and, and uh, go with the group. Um, and I'm sure Scott can do it. He's going to be in good shape as he makes his way down to that exhaust gate. I tell you, the cattle may go through the gate first, but as soon as they do, Scott may beat them to the water. Yeah, you can't see it here from the, the view that everybody has at home. There's a, a, an irrigation ditch and a little stream uh, just about, I don't know, 30, 40 feet down the hill from that exhaust gate. And uh, you usually didn't have to tell these dogs where to go. They've been here all week long, and they figured out where the water is. It looked to me like there that, that Scott was going to beat the cattle to the water down there. Yeah. So, he earned it. That was a nice run. He did. That was an excellent run. That was an excellent run by the reserve nursery champion, Dorrance and Scott. We're talking with Dorrance Eye Camp of Gillette, Wyoming, and Dorrance has just completed a run with his good young dog, Scott. Now, Scott's not with us because Scott's had a busy week and deserved a little time off. Uh, Dorrance, tell us what, uh, what Scott's week's been like. Scott's had a tough week. He's young enough to run in the nursery and good enough to run in the open class, so I've run him in both classes, and he's done quite well for me. I'm reserve champion this year in the nursery. 
Congratulations, reserve national champion nursery dog, and then come back and, and run in the open. Do you feel like all those runs uh, had its toll in your in your final open run? It, it sure did, but Scott, I use him a lot at home and he's in very good shape. He's He will not be three years old till October 24th, and he's probably in the best shape of his life. Now, you know, generally open dogs, because of their age, uh, have life experiences that help them on the trial field when different situations arise. The course that was set up here for the open class, was there anything that maybe Scott hadn't seen because of his, his uh, young years? Well, I should say no because I use him a lot on the ranch, especially when we shear, I use him a lot. I work him a lot on sheep for shearing and he's been exposed to just about everything that's out there and what a young dog the answer to it is obedience if a dog will listen to you you can put him up on anything did, did you think the uh, course was uh, was a good course to, to to pick out a champion for this year yes it was it's an excellent course picking them off the hill bringing them in the drives and it's beautiful country i've been to several trials in my life and this is one of the prettiest and well run i might add now you've been trialing quite a few years and, and probably started in sheepdog trialing, is that correct? Yes, I did. When I started, there were no cattle trials, and that was just about 30 years ago. But I think sheep trialing is a little more finesseful, and when you can run a sheep, you can go to these cattle trials, and it really helps you. Do you have some young dogs coming in for next year? I do. I have a couple young ones coming in that aren't related to Scott, but they're out of some good lines, and they're starting quite well. What Do you plan on making a lot of trials this, this next year? I want to make enough to qualify come, to come back to the national finals. This was a good finals, don't you agree? I've been to a few of them, and this is my, I think, the very best. Well run, well handled, and beautiful country. Can't be in a more beautiful spot than Steamboat Springs, Colorado, the Flying Diamond Ranch. It's just outstanding. Uh, Dorns, thanks for stopping by. Congratulations again on Reserve National Champion Nursery Dog, and because uh, that's just outstanding. So that had to make the whole trip worthwhile. It sure made my day, I'll tell you that. Thanks for coming by.